So some people on our air, uh, some market commentators say the expressed intent of Federal Reserve policy right now is to make people unemployed, <laughs> to throw people out of work and to raise the unemployment rate. Isn't that what you guys want by tightening a policy right here? Absolutely not. We are uh, not maximum employment is one of our dual mandated goals. We are certainly going to try to run our monetary policy to achieve and maintain those goals. We want people working. We want a healthy economy. And we're trying to guide our policy in order to achieve those goals. But by tightening policy and raising rates, is it one of the outcomes of that normally higher unemployment? Well, we're trying to gear the economy. We don't want it to overheat, which ends up with bad outcomes for the public. We know when we went into recession, that wasn't a good outcome for anyone, including a lot of people who were thrown out of work. And yet we don't also want to put on the brakes on the economy, right? We want to sort of basically calibrate our policies so that we can maintain the expansion, keep people working, keep the economy healthy. That's not what markets appear to think you're doing, which is uh, markets are taking a very negative message from the Federal Reserve. Um, what do you hear? What signals do you hear from the downdraft in stocks from very low interest rates right, right now? Is it telling you that maybe you have the outlook wrong here? And is it telling you that maybe you should slow down or pause? So I think there's a lot of currents affecting the markets. I don't think it's all about their assessment of Fed policy. I think there are downside risks to the economy. We've seen some slowdown in Europe and in China. We saw the ISM index still showing the growth in manufacturing, but at a, at a slower pace. And I think that's what's going on. I think we weren't expecting 3% growth next year. We all have ratcheted down our forecasts. I think the markets are putting a lot of emphasis on the downside risk. There are also some upside risks. And now we're trying to calibrate our policy to that outlook. But again, we're going to take the signals that we're getting from the market. They could be Their assessment of the risk could be different from ours. And we're going to look at those as well as the information we get from our business contacts about what actual businesses are doing in terms of their hiring and their investment and use that to inform our outlook and to guide policy. But, but so I think we're in a good spot with policy, actually. I don't really? think we're ahead of the curve. I don't think we're behind the curve. I think we're in a really good spot. You don't think policy is too assessing. tight here? I do not. I think we basically are at a very good spot. We can take time. We don't have inflation you know, running ahead. We don't see it accelerating. We see it around 2%, which is good. We see strong labor markets, which is good. And we have time to assess the situation. So I think we're actually in a good spot. Do you forecast the Fed will tighten more next year? So as you know, our median forecast across all the participants in the FOMC has a few more rate increases for next year. But this is all dependent on how the economy performs, right? We're going to look at the data. We're going to look at our business contacts information from both, you know, the labor market side, the consumer side, and business side. And we're going to use that to inform our outlook for the economy. But again, I think we're starting at a really good spot. The economy was very strong last year. These are good things. Now we're going to a bit slower growth as we anticipated. And now we're just sort of calibrating to that. If I'm a market if I'm a market participant here and I see the economy performing the way the consensus of the Fed believes it will perform, 2.3 percent GDP, unemployment rate ticks down to 3.5 percent, inflation remains stable at 2 percent. In that context, should I expect two rate hikes from the Federal Reserve? Well, I think that's what our best estimate is in terms of the median. But again, right, one or two rate hikes, right, is about where we're seeing the economy now. It will really depend on how the economy performs. But frankly, I think that's a really good forecast, right? If we got an economy that performed that well, basically soft landing into you know a slowdown to, towards trend right. growth, we should be very happy with that. I, I, one more question, and then I want to get to the question to the anchors. But real quick, you voted for an increase in uh, December, right? I it, did. Okay. Before you went into that meeting, global economies were already weak. The market had turned down. Interest rates were lower and trade problems were already out there. In the face of those four problems, you didn't see an issue or a reason to pause? No, because I think that on the other side was the, the, the actual hard data that we got from our business people were that, yes, there were concerns about trade policy, and there continue to be. There's uncertainty around that. But it hasn't really had impacted the business plans. They were trying to hire. They were having trouble finding qualified workers. In fact, that was actually hurting their ability to, to fill orders. They were not changing their investment plans. We had some, some firms that said they were thinking about maybe changing their investment plans. But overall, 
right? It was a cautious, you know, optimism that things were going to mm-hmm. fill through. But again, that's the that's the actual monetary policy making process. We have to take into account all the data from the markets and from businesses and from the consumer side and use that to assess our you know, where we want policy to be. My colleagues in Englewood Cliff have a few questions. Guys? Uh, actually, you, you kind of asked what I was going to ask. You followed up uh, at the same time I, I raised my hand, Steve. But I, I just, just just to ask it again, um, um, uh, uh, President uh, Mester, if, if we have a good economy, as you said, the economy continues to perform well, but we don't see any inflation pick up into next year. Why does it make sense at this point to predict two rate increases? Well, we're always looking forward, right? So when we put down our forecast, we have to predict where, where is the economy going and what's the appropriate policy to achieve those outcomes. So you don't set policy and then say, okay, what, what's the economy doing? It's all sort of part of the, but, the but mix. What, it, you're if, right. If, if, right? If, infl- if we don't have inflation moving, you're exactly right. If we didn't foresee that inflation was moving up, then we could be stopping here. We, okay, it you know, it's sound really like that. going to be where is the economy going? Where it, is it going? And what's the appropriate policy? It just to get sounded, there? It sounded we like we all wrote down our forecasts. Yeah, sorry. And that in those forecasts, right, we all had to put down an appropriate policy path. It, but I'm open to sort of saying the economy tell us, right? Maybe we pause for a while, we assess things, and we look at where the economy is going. I don't know why. But we always have to be forward looking. Right, we can't look back. I don't know what that means, and I don't know why it's built into the the formula. You have the dual mandates. And one of them is full employment or even better than that, whatever you can, you know, it, as good as we can get in terms of prosperity and growing the economy is the one. Right. And then you got right. the other one, which is inflation. So if the other one doesn't, doesn't rear its head, I don't see why it's built into the equation that you need two more hikes because nobody knows what Because look what at it this way, Joe. Yeah. Right. Right. Look at it this way. If you were to keep interest rates too low, whatever that means, just say too low, you might have a pickup in inflation. And so that's the question. And inflation could get out of hand. Right, so but, it really is a calibration exercise. Where do you want right. policy to be to actually achieve well, you, the so you, but, but it seems like you're being forward looking there and making some assumptions about the risk to more inflation, but, but you're ignoring oil prices and ignoring copper and ignoring stock prices. And it, if you're going to be forward looking, I, I would think I'd be more worried about that it's already maybe in danger of overshooting. I mean, you're anticipating inflation and you've got no reason to think that it's coming, uh, but you're not anticipating a a slowdown where... I I don't think that that's true. I don't think we have no reason to think it's coming. I do think that, you know, we're in a good spot. We don't see inflation accelerating aggressively. We don't see, um, you know, we see a strong labor market. So I agree. And we see growth decelerating towards our trend. So I agree with you. We're in a good spot. I don't think we're ahead of the curve. I don't think we're behind the curve. I think we're in a good spot. And now it's just really assessing the incoming information that we get on where the economy is, what the risks look like going forward. So I I do agree with you. We're in a good spot. President Master, do you think that policy is currently stimulative? Are you below neutral? Do you think the Fed needs to get to a neutral rate? I think we're in the range of estimates of neutral. I think the economy is going to tell tell us whether we're at neutral or not. And that's precisely what, to me, data dependence means. We're now going to have the economy assess incoming information. It's going to tell us. If we don't see inflation picking up, and we keep and we see the, the labor market staying reasonably, you know, strong from where we are now. Then that may tell us we, we're at neutral. But f- if we see inflation picking up, then we're perhaps a little stimulative on the monetary policy side. The economy is going to be telling us where we are. I, I want to follow up on that because that's an important uh, comment, I think, which is that are you saying that if inflation remains around two percent and unemployment kind of bounces around this three point seven percent rate? that you won't see a need for further rate hikes? That'll tell you that we're at neutral? I think we're going to be reassess. I certainly would reassess my forecast of where I think the, the, not, you know, the normal rate of unemployment or the long-run rate of unemployment will be. And I think what you've seen over time is we have been reassessing where we think those longer-run stars, as the chairman says, calls them, are, right? And so I've certainly lowered my long-run unemployment rate. The longer we go on without sort of these imbalances, 
you know, building up, the more I'm going to be reassessing things. What about the balance sheet? Are you reassessing the balance sheet? There's been a lot of concern that the balance sheet is a, I mean, it's not stealth anymore, but it, that it was a stealth tightening, and all of a sudden, uh, a lot of people are talking about the balance sheet, uh, plan to roll off $600 billion of securities. Right. Is that something you should be rethinking? Okay. So I've been very supportive of what we're doing with the balance sheet. I don't think at this point I'm going to reconsider the balance sheet. But I don't agree with the, the uh, interpretation out there that we've forgotten about the balance sheet. We, we have that going on. There, the balance sheet is being reduced in a very gradual and predictable manner. And that's part of the economic environment. We're, that we take into account when we're setting our interest rate. But the rate. chairman says it's on autopilot. And he, it's also been said that you would not adjust the balance sheet roll-off pretty much until you've already brought rates down to zero. Right. Well, I think if you actually look at the documents that we put out of describing the balance sheet and how we were normalizing the balance sheet, we have always left open the fact that if the economy deteriorates, and we need to change our balance sheet policy, we are going to be changing the balance sheet policy. So it's on autopilot in the extent of we've set a plan, we've set out what it was, we wanted the markets to understand what the plan was, but if the economy deteriorates in a way that necessitates changing that plan, we are willing to do it. I don't foresee that happening in the economy at this point, but we've been open to that and we've said publicly that that's what we plan Becky to do. Becky has a question back from Englewood, or from NASDAQ, sorry, New York. Uh, President Mester, you said that you're listening to signals from the market and that goes into your economic outlook, all of the output that, or the input that you're putting into these things, but you also say that you're listening to, to business contacts. What, what are you hearing from your business contacts about the economy? Mm -hmm. Right. So our business contacts have been um, more optimistic than you would get from looking at just the markets. Um, they are certainly concerned about um, trade policy, many of them. They are, you know, the uncertainty around that is something that concerns them. But up until, you know, very recently, they hadn't really changed their plans. Hiring is an issue. They have difficulty hiring qualified workers. They've been trying to be creative in how they go about um, sourcing workers. But again, it's still a, uh, a difficulty for them. And that, and that seems to be the main difficulty. I think no one likes being in an uncertain environment, and, and that is affecting their, their outlook. But again, they haven't really taken hard actions. Only a few firms have said that they've really put plans on hold due to the uncertainty. But yesterday we heard from Apple, actually it might have been the day before, uh, that told us that uh, iPhone sales are down in China, uh, and that's in part due to trade tensions. Right. Um, are you seeing this? There was an, um, uh, an uh, editorial in the Wall Street Journal they called the iPhone as a canary or something along those lines. Right. Is it a canary? Is, is that a sign to you that things are slowing down globally maybe faster than you had thought? Well, we certainly know that in China we have had reports that growth there is slowing, and that certainly has informed the outlook. If you look at the FOMC statement from the last meeting, right, we pointed out um, we are monitoring global developments and financial market development. So this is something that we know, right, is part of the, the economic environment, and, and it's certainly something I'm going to be paying attention to when I'm evaluating the economy going forward and talking to business contacts in my district and elsewhere. Do you have a heightened fear of recession next year or the year, or, or the year after? I don't foresee that the economy is, is getting into a point of recession. I do believe that growth is slowing from the 3% we had last year, but that's you know, what was expected, and I don't foresee it to go into recession. But of course, as you know, you don't, don't predict recession. Uh, but again, our goals are to set monetary policy that's consistent with ma basically maintaining a healthy economy, maintaining the expansion, maintaining, you know, maximum employment, and bringing inflation to 2% and maintaining it around 2%. So, Becky? Uh, President Mester, I, I'm watching on Twitter kind of reaction to what you're saying. And, and it's funny because, as often happens with Twitter, there are some people who think you sound incredibly dovish, others who think that you're looking at two more rate hikes for this year. And, and I can hear the parts in the interview where you've said things to make all these people think all of that. I, I want to come back at you and just give you a chance. Maybe you're trying to not let anybody pin you into a corner. but. If you were to sit right now and look at things, I, I heard you say that you think we're, we're mm -hmm. in the low end of the neutral rate right now, so maybe that signals we won't see more rate hikes. I also heard you say that, yeah, if the economy keeps going along, we could see two more rate hikes. But if you had to vote today 
based on the information that you're hearing, would you say raise rates right now, again? So I think we're in a good spot, as I said earlier, to actually assess the economy. So I don't have to vote today, and I want to take the time that I have to actually evaluate how the economy is going. I don't feel an urgency to increase rates from where we are now because I see an impending inflation problem. I don't see that in the data. I do think that, you know, we have to take into account that financial market conditions have tightened and we want to build that into our forecast. So again, I don't have to vote now and, you know, I, I, I'm not going to give you where I'm going to be voting in the future. I want to take the time I have to evaluate where economic conditions are. But again, I do think policy is neither, you know, ahead of the curve or behind the curve. I think we're in a good spot. I, I'm going to ask you the last question, but I just want to make sure, Joe, I was expecting you to ask uh, Ms. Mester if she had the jobs number and if she'd share it with us early. <laughs> but you didn't do that, Joe. <laughs> uh, I, I would like that. Well, we only got 11 yeah. minutes. Uh, go, go ahead, Joe. Can yeah, you give no, us the right, number well, early? Do no, you have I, the, yeah. A wink or a nod or anything? I do not have the job You don't have the number? You can tweet okay. something. Let, tweet let me something. ask you. Yeah, we, we could. Let, let me ask you a f final question here. Um, with all of what's going on with other central banks, the ECB is supposed to begin unwinding or raising rates late, later this year, I suppose. I keep getting mixed up that we're in 2019 already. Um, Japan, maybe. Is, is that part of the consideration of the Federal Reserve right now, that um, there's a global reduction in liquidity going on and that all of it together, not just the Fed, is really too much for both economies and markets to bear? I don't look at it that way. I mean, it's certainly part of the economic environment. But again, I'm focused on where is the U.S. economy going? Will that affect our markets? Will that affect our economy? And then setting our monetary policy to do what's going to be best in terms of our dual mandate goals. So, yes, we look at that as part of the economic environment. Uh, we understand sort of where other um, central banks are placing their policy. But again, I think they're doing the same things we're doing, is they're trying to assess their economy as well. So we take it into account the environment. But how much environment. further away from other central banks can we actually get? Isn't that something that attenuates our need, our, our ability to, to just go, go it alone? Well, we have to set our monetary policy to promote the U.S. economy and our dual mandate goals, okay. and that's our focus.